Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Got a very interesting show today. Crystal, what's going on? So much good stuff. We have Reverend William Barber on the show today um, to talk about Poor People's Campaign. That'll be awesome. Uh, I'm looking at the debate, UBI Freedom Div Dividend versus the Federal Jobs Guarantee. Rock the world. You yeah. know, I'm a little yeah. nervous waiting into it, but we're just going <laughs> to dive right in. You're looking at Joe Biden. Right. New poll has Yang higher than Buttigieg. we got to talk about that and more today on Rising. What are you looking at? Well, Joe Biden's position atop the polls remains both solid and precarious, depending on who you talk to. His support is a mile wide and an inch deep, or it's rock solid with the African-American voters who will carry him to victory in 2020. A recent Monmouth poll found him in a virtual tie with Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, while Joe Biden slipped significantly. Over and over again, the polls tell us that in this particular election, electability is the main concern. The former vice president appears to be recognizing his precarious position. That's why he came out with an interview yesterday that perhaps best exemplifies his candidacy. Biden spent much of his Associated Press interview with African-American journalists focused on race relations, calling racism a white man's problem, which the AP itself noted in its story was likely an attempt to shore up his support amongst the black community. Buried deeper within the story, however, is Biden's core argument for why he should be president. Biden assured the assembled group of reporters that President Obama bestowed upon him with, quote, presidential authority for real, and that he, quote, never second-guessed him while he was in the White House. Let's ignore the fact that this is so obviously not true, but just really how pathetic that statement is. In the words of Tywin Lannister from Game of Thrones, any man who must say I am the king is no true king. Biden spent much of his vice presidential years annoying the core West Wing staff around President Obama, including the occupant of the White House. From gay marriage to a quasi-endorsement of Mitch McConnell, his relationship with the team was anything but rosy. Just take a look at all the Obama staffers who are working for Pod Save America instead of Joe Biden for president right now, if you don't believe me. That's because the Obama people know a good candidate and a campaign when they see one. This is not it. Biden's banal platitudes about race mixed with his middle ground approach to pretty much everything may be enough to limp across the finish line for the primary, but it's not what America is asking for right now. A recent NBC Wall Street Journal poll found anger at the U.S. political system amongst at least 70 percent of Americans. This is a change election year. Interestingly enough, it's one in which the incumbent is anti-establishment, and the main frontrunner to replace him is very much seeking to reestablish the policies that put his opponent in the White House. Fundamentally on substance, beyond a return to yesteryear, Joe Biden really doesn't have that much to say. And maybe that's why his staff aren't letting him do too many events so far. And I think, Crystal, it just really exemplifies what the Biden candidacy is all about. And over and over again, the more precarious he gets, he tries to tie himself to the coattails of President Obama, right. who's not even saying anything in his favor. We've talked about it here. Michelle Obama has nothing to say to defend Joe Biden. Yeah. It's just, I mean, you, vote, that tells you everything you It's need. like, vote Joe Biden, suck it up and do it, yeah, because you exactly. have no other, no other choice. We're going to lose to Trump if you don't. Which That's is his just, own wife's argument. Right, his I know, his, his I mean, own wife doesn't even I, have a ringing endorsement of his candidacy. But, I think the dynamic that you laid out yeah. here is really important because Trump uniquely, even though he occupies the White House, he runs the administration, he yeah. is the commander in chief, unfortunately, he is going to be able to run again as an outsider, he, as the yeah. change agent. And you don't want to be the candidate of let's keep things the same, let's go backwards when you have an electorate, 70% of which are saying 70%. we are mad. Right. And when you have an economy that's shaky mm. and unstable and a world that is shaky un and unstable. And if you dig into that poll, it's not just 73%. 43% say they very well agreed with the statement that things are bad in the country from a political system. That's not a place in which you want to be running to a return to yesterday's politics. It's that they're angry with the system itself. Yeah, and that gets to that core argument of electability, yep. which, you know, really rests on very thin mm -hmm. ground at this point. Absolutely. Next up on Rising, the most recent data from the Census Bureau reveals a startling statistic. 39.7 million people living in poverty. What are the 2020 candidates proposing to address this? And should there be a DNC-sponsored debate focusing solely on poverty? Reverend Dr. William Barber II gives us his views next on Rising. <laughs> 